And Bach, I have a question. Do you still have to EQ a sound system front of house if situated outdoors? Yeah, for sure. Because the sound system outdoors, when you turn it up loud enough and you have the, the microphones at a certain distance, they're going to feed back anyway. Um, the shows I've done, I got the same feedback as I did indoors in the upper mids, not the lower part. The lower portion, I mean, there's so many factors here, like what kind of subwoofers, what kind of strength the subwoofers, uh, where you're crossing over the subwoofers and what type of crossover uh, uh, that type you're going to use, like Linkwitz Riley or Butterworth, because they have different properties too. And that's a whole other subject, which I'd like to go through actually. But um, it depends on the equipment you're using. It depends on uh, the microphone you're using. But basically, yes, I would, I would equalize in very much the same fashion. Always put a high pass filter on the front of house. Uh, correct any low frequency instruments or channels on their own channel. If I need to give them more or less um, any equalization, I would do that. But um, yeah, it's very similar, but the indoor properties are going to be different than outdoor properties where outdoors you're not worried about like uh, uh, standing waves or anything like that because there's no boundaries to, to create that. But you do get slapback echoes off buildings and that's just a matter of aiming your speakers and nothing really to do with equalization. Um, anyway, so yes, I, I would equalize outdoor and I could show you two. I, I'm going to try to dig them up, but I've got two graphs, one for like a standard indoor setting that I used at one particular club. I think it was the, uh, the Garrison Club in Toronto and uh, an outdoor show I did at the, the Toronto Docks one time. And if you look at the EQs, they're very similar. One was indoors, one was outdoors, nothing fed back. It was loud enough. I answered the four questions and that's basically what you'd probably have to do is answer the four questions, which I'll go through in another video. But basically, is it loud enough? Can everybody hear? Can everybody understand? And will it feed back? Four basic questions. Once those questions are answered and I'm satisfied, uh, I leave it. But one more note. Um, I do subtractive EQing almost all the time. I rarely boost frequencies in a live setting. I'll do it on a soundtrack, but I won't, and a, and a recording, of course, but I won't do it in a live setting unless absolutely I have to, and it's not going to feed back. If a microphone doesn't have much pre emphasis in the upper mids, and a singer really needs a little bit of sparkle, like maybe between 6 and 8K, and I boost it, and it doesn't feed back, so be it, I leave it. But mostly I do subtractive EQ, because if you do subtractive EQ, you're getting rid of some amplitude of different frequency ranges, and you're preserving headroom. If you use additive EQ, where you're boosting frequencies, you're going to run out of headroom, because it's going to increase the level, and of course, you know, more chance of... Uh, or less, less headroom and more chance of feeding back, of course. So subtractive EQ, and if anything, only very, very modest additive EQ. Uh, I hope that helps. Thank you very much uh, for tuning. I, I hope I answered these questions, and I will go back to my channel and answer them actually on the channel, on the page for the video. Thank you very much. Uh, subscribe, uh, please. No. <laughs> I should say that again. So uh, please subscribe and I'll continue to make uh, inform. Please subscribe and I'll continue to make informative content and I appreciate you dropping by. Thank you very much.